It started, of course, I got baptized and saved when I was 10. Grew up in a church. Sometime right after eighth grade graduation, we were pulled from church, um, and I never got to go back. Missed it tremendously. And then as teenagers came on, um, I was a horrible teenager. I stepped away from everything. Um, and at the age of 20, I got married. Um, I loved him more than life itself. And five years into the marriage, um, we divorced. He became addicted to prescription meds and it became very ugly. A couple of years later, um, I met another gentleman, we got married, and we had moved out of state from my home state. And three years into that marriage, um, it was already incredibly rocky. And then I had, my son was born. And I actually was hoping that that would, you know, kind of make things better. And of course, that's a, not a good way to look at things. Children don't make things better. Children are better, but they don't make relationships better. We moved back to my home state. And after some very short length of time, um, it started to get very, very ugly. It turned out that he was addicted to porn. Um, and he was um, wanting to do exactly what he was seeing with me and I, of course, there was, I did not want to do that. Um, then the forcing came. So I was um, basically sexually abused in a marriage. Um, it became incredibly dark. I didn't know what to do with my life at that time. But I kept getting this urge to find Christ again. So I had visited a few churches, um, I went to one particular one, and I had talked to the pastor a couple of times. I was trying to, I was trying to seek help. I wanted somebody to lead me back to Christ. So I had gone into him at one time, and I was just crying incredibly hard, and said that it had occurred again, and I needed help. And he told me to, I needed to join the church. And that was it. Needless to say, I did not go back, um, but I was still searching. My whole world became even more dark. I did not see any way out of what I was going through at all. Um, the only way that I saw to get out of it was to end my life. I would travel a particular road every morning that was a two-lane highway, and if I passed a 18-wheeler, I knew that if I put myself in front of that, I would be gone instantly. It wouldn't take very long. But somehow, crying over the sobbing tears, God would put Josh in my face. Sorry. It would give me the fight to not end my life. I didn't want him to be raised by that particular person. So after time, my strength became at least bearable. I was able to get away from him. After about a year or so by ourselves, I, my first husband comes into, back into the picture again. So we started from scratch and here we are today. <laughs> um, we lost everything where we were and somehow or another brought us here. I never would have thought coming to Tennessee 2,000 miles away from where I'm originally from, but we came here. Josh started coming here to Victory. My adopted son started coming here to Victory. My son was saved, baptized, both of them. Um, I came here a few times, but I always felt almost guilty or some, I, I just, I don't know, I kept, in my mind, I kept wanting to, somebody needed to bring me back to Christ. That was just in my forefront. I wasn't thinking anything past that. Um, but I kept coming periodically. And um, one Sunday, it just, I was completely overtaken. 
and the next thing I know, I was on the altar and I was crying my eyes out. Sorry. <laughs> That's though where I cried out to him and I let it all go. Everything was left at the feet of Jesus. He rescued me, he forgave me, he redeemed me.